Hello there, welcome back to Legends with Durka on the Series X, where today we're going to take a look at the two new commanders for the Pan-Asian Destroyer line and see which one we should choose first. World of Warship Legends is notorious for being extremely stingy with resources to upgrade your commanders. As a community contributor and as a player of this game since launch, I still do not have a single fully upgraded 16-4 commander. Not a single one. And now we've just been given access to two new commanders and you guys might be wondering which one is the best to go for first. So sit back, relax, and let's see who would be more beneficial for you. All right, for starters, the game in the background is a crazy cracking game, and hopefully it will reaffirm everything that I'm telling you about the commanders and how effective you can and will be. So who do I have at the helm of the Fushin in this game? Well, none other than Sa Zinbing, and he could be classified as the more of the gunboat destroyer captain, whereas the other guy, Ding Qingsheng, is more of a torpedo-focused commander. Now backing up Zin Bing on my boat is Eric Bay for concealment and old Vinny Mordoff for the gun reload. If you do not have Vincent Mordoff, you could also consider using Ding Rusheng, who is the Asian George Dewey, kind of the jack of all trades guy. He can lower your gun re reload as well. I also like Troobs or Vian to increase the survivability of your destroyer or sims because to me after playing this game for a couple years when it comes to fighting other destroyers the best thing i have found over the years is to do anything that gives you an advantage in a knife fight usually that's gun reload health survivability and in this video we're going to be talking a lot about hunting and killing enemy destroyers so if you haven't noticed there are a lot of them right now on the open water so most notably for this setup, we are using Observant Rage, Perceptive, and Knuckle Duster, which is new. Knuckle Duster makes your torpedoes more stealthy, and it increases their chance to knock enemy modules out, at the cost of a little less damage, 10%. And now this perk is something that I think we definitely should not sleep on, as the more that I see these Pan-Asian Destroyer torpedoes hit, the more I notice things like knocked engines and rudders, and it can be devastating for the enemy to be dead in the water for any amount of time. Battleships, they can't move or angle. They just sit there and get farmed. Enemy cruisers, again, they can't get out of the way of big battleship rounds. It can be devastating to knock someone's engine out. And if they damage con it, well, that opens up a lot of opportunities for your team. So it's evident that we can't upgrade both commanders at the same time. We're probably going to have to pick one for now, at least for now, you know, unless you just have promotion orders, commendations, insignias saved up, but I know I sure as heck do not. Keep in mind, you know, down the road, we could put resources into the other guy and do your torpedo focused build just as well. So first things first, what are these destroyers and what are they good at? Now, from Tier 5 on, they seem to be pretty good hybrid boats. That is, they could go both ways, torpedoes or guns, depending on your play style. Let's start with the Tier 5 Fushin. This is a Nevni-class destroyer that was originally built for the Soviet Navy. That means it has those big, fantastic 130mm guns that pack a punch, and it is a very good high-speed destroyer. Also, it comes with four smokes. The Tier 6, Gajamada, boy I hope I'm pronouncing these right, is essentially a Jervis class destroyer and it's characterized by good high explosive shells, a great fire chance, and a much larger salvo than the Fushin of 10 torpedoes. It has the same smokes, but it's interesting to note at this tier, you can also trade the smokes out for a 15 second 7.5 kilometer radar. At tier 7, we have the Shenyang, and it is a Benson class destroyer with a super fast reload of around 3 seconds. So you can kind of see from this quick overview that going for a straight gunboat build on any of these ships is going to work out just fine. Now, here are the three reasons I specifically would choose the gunboat guy. 
Zenbing. Okay, number one. This destroyer line has only been out for a few days right now, and there are a lot of players grinding up this line, just like you, just like me. Having a gun-focused destroyer will make you more competitive in hunting and killing these guys down. If you've followed this channel for a long time, or any amount of time, you know that I almost exclusively use my destroyers in a more of a gunboat style. To me, it guarantees me more wins when playing this game. I'm nearly always solo playing and often find myself on my own without good teammate support. I have found being a solo player that if you can be the last destroyer standing, you will have mostly free reign around the map to spot, sail around, and cap as you see fit. Also, you have the four smokes in this build that you could use to hide from the fun police if an enemy carrier decides he wants to focus you. How do you best take control of a game, whether domination or capture the base? Kill the enemy destroyers. And that's why I've mostly enjoyed playing gunboat destroyers. Number two, deep water torpedoes. If you have noticed, these pan-Asian destroyers have torpedoes that run deeper in the water and they are indicated by this new icon that kind of looks like a heart. This means a few things for us. The torpedoes are more stealthy, yes. They hit below the torpedo belt, so they cause more damage, yes. They cause more floods, mm-hmm, and they knock out modules. And so at this point, you might be thinking, why would I not fully spec into these awesome torpedoes? Well, deep water torpedoes run a little deeper in the water, so they will sail harmlessly under enemy destroyers who have a very shallow draft. In other words, you cannot torp enemy destroyers, you cannot damage them with your torpedoes at all. And we just kind of covered why eliminating enemy destroyers can give your team a huge advantage, meaning your only way to combat enemy destroyers is with your guns. You cannot torp them in a smoke screen, you can't ambush them with torpedoes from behind an island, and you cannot suicide rush them to dump torpedoes into their side. You only have your guns. And on that note, since so many people are playing this line right now, it's not uncommon to see five enemy destroyers per team that your torpedoes are completely useless against. When things even out down the road, everyone moves on to a normal balance of destroyers per game. Hopefully that will be the perfect opportunity and you'll have enough promo orders and the like saved up to put into the torpedo commander if you see fit. The third reason I chose to use Sazen Bing was very simply fun. Now this part is really just my personal preference. Torpedo boat play for me is very different than gunboat play. They have different roles and things that they should be doing. Torpedo focused boats, they're there to scare away big enemy ships, deal huge alpha damage with torpedo salvos, maybe sweep smoke screens that have ships in them with your torpedoes, and to spot, use their concealment and their speed to move around the map and make sure your teammates can see the enemies. Now gunboats, while they have different roles, one of them we talked about is hunting and killing other enemy destroyers. And that to me is a lot of fun. It's what I enjoy doing. They're also good at chipping away at enemy health with fast firing guns. Think Fletcher, Akazuki, Gearing, Friesland, and at annoying enemies with this HE spam. And so for those reasons alone, I just enjoy playing gunboats more. It's more fun for me. Luckily though, these boats being good hybrid ships, you'll have the option to do both. So the Fushin here is a pretty great boat, I have to say, and I have really been enjoying playing her. I am grinding these the old fashioned way without buying them out with global XP because I really wanted to brush up on my destroyer play. And these deep water torpedoes had me pretty interested. Since we are in the Fushin and coming up to an epic finale to this game that is now 2v2, let's see how she stacks up to the other tier 5 destroyers. Health point wise, she is in 8th place out of the 11 tier 5 destroyers that I have. 14,100 HP points. Not the best in this area, so choose your battles carefully and be ready to smoke up to save your precious health. Now the gun reload is where it gets kind of interesting. K-1 
Keeping in mind I have a level 16 Mordoff on here and Observant Rage, it's at 4.5 seconds. This is third best in class behind the Mahan and the T61. HE shell damage is 1900, and that's a three-way tie for third place. It does edge out the Mahan, Icarus, and the Japanese destroyers in this area. 7% fire chance is low. It's low for the guns, and the um, AP is in the middle of the pack as well, damage-wise. Her ability to deal HE damage is pretty average. In the DPM, damage per minute department, she's in 6th place overall out of 11, and 5th place in the armor piercing DPM area. T61 and Mahan, of course, being the best in both of these categories. The guns are just so fast on those destroyers. The thing to really watch out for on Fushin here is the turret traverse. At 26 seconds, it is slower than some battleships that you might play. And that's even with the module in slot 1 to make it a little faster. You really have to plan your engagements, especially against enemy destroyers, or you will lose the fights. You have to have all of your guns already pre-aimed on a side. If you've seen every destroyer engagement that I've made this game so far, I have the guns in the right area. And that's why Perceptive in slot 3 is the best perk that you could choose to go in that area. So this destroyer has six torpedoes. They reload in 75 seconds. That's fifth place overall, but the alpha damage is very low. 13,500, it's nearly the worst of the tier. Where they shine though is the detection. It's 800 meters stock, and this is by far the best. It makes for the lowest reaction time of any tier five destroyer at a little over five seconds. Enemy captains will barely see your torpedoes coming, but, on that note, your torpedoes are very slow. On this gun build, they are 60 knots. Only the Hatsuharo has slower torps at this tier, so you'll really have to try to predict where your red ships, the enemies, are going to be. Sometimes aiming on the white line, just it's not going to do it for this ship. You're really going to have to try to predict where they're going to be. AA is 20, that's decent. Top speed, 39.1. It is the fastest tier 5 destroyer that I have. A 610 meter turning circle is middle of the pack, pretty average, and the concealment of 5.7 is also very meh, average, middle of the pack. It's not bad, considering the Nevenes is a lot worse. Um, yeah, and that's with Eric Bay, he's a 16-2, and also look at me now. So, at this game, it's the end, we've taken on most of the destroyers, and it's just 1v1, and this poor Colorado doesn't have much of a chance, I have to say. I mean, he could get a really good HE salvo, so I am trying to be careful. But since we've occupied the caps for most of the game, at the beginning I was very brave. I stuck around in the middle because I wanted the cap, and then I made sure that C was also in our possession. And with that points lead being a destroyer, it means that if it came down to it, you could simply sail away. Win smarter, not harder, right? Yes, <laughs> but I also wanted the Kraken. Um, I had had a, a couple games in the Fushin here where I just kind of had bad luck or was completely abandoned, and the torpedoes only having six of them and then being slow. If you're faced with cruisers, it can be very, very challenging. But luckily, the old Colorado came back around here. And since he's already started using his rudder, I know he's going right to the island, and that's going to make cleaning this one up pretty easy. I do hope you guys enjoyed kind of the breakdown of the commanders and a little bit of info on the Fushin here. And uh, let me know what you think of the Pan-Asian Destroyers down below. Are you guys farther than me? Do you have the Jervis yet or the Xinyang? I hope I just said that correctly. Yes, Xinyang. Curious to hear what you guys think about it. Please leave a like and subscribe for future content. We're going to have some more videos coming your way. All right. See ya.